just before I begin with part two of chapter 12, I will say right now that some of the subject matters there's that are being mentioned or even described in this video may be disturbing or and or upsetting to some viewers. If you are sensitive to this type of stuff, I highly recommend you click off this video right now. Viewer discretion as advised. To his shock, the date had in the newspaper had been printed way back in 1999, the same year that Ridley had been busted by the FBI. Ron opened it and began reading it, and what he found made his blood run cold. It was a detailed story that involves, revealed something. Ron realized that it might have had something to do with the town being abandoned, and that was the police chief of Darkwood had been a brother of none other than Gerald Farkas, Ridley's evil father. And it wasn't all that was revealed. Apparently, Gerald Farkas was not just a crime boss, like Ridley had mentioned at the hospital interview, but he also had been an informer of Mayor of Darkwood, and he also had used his power and wealth to run the whole town in iron fist of Trainian operation. And Gerald's older brother, Todd Farkas, was his partner in crime who helped him to do it. From what Ron read, Todd Farkas had used his power as the town's police chief of, of the police to even and twist, manipulate, and destroy justice within the town that made things even worse. Every single police officer in every station had been working for Mayor, Mayor Gerald Farkas and his brother. So this has something to do with some crimes that were committed that were easily covered up. As Ron was about to read more on the article, his communicator buzzed. Hey KP, you found something? Ron asked upon answering it. Yes, I did, Kim replied with a grim expression on the screen. I found something hidden inside of a secret safe. The evidence room, room that you need to see. It's disturbing. I found something too. It's an old newspaper mentioning someone by the name of Todd Farkas. He was the police chief of this town, and he was also the old the brother of Ridley's father. Ron informed. Todd Farkas? Wait, that's Ridley's last name. Kim exclaimed. I know, Ron replied. And that means he's Ridley's uncle. I'm beginning to think that... He that he and Gerald may have had something to do with the town being abandoned. I can't be for sure about it yet, but I'm pretty sure that they did something to make everyone leave this place forever. Well, you better bring that paper down with you, since it's very important. You also might want to come down to the evidence room to see what I found, Kim said in a more urgent voice. What did you find? Ron asked. Well, I felt a loose tile here in, in the evidence room. So I lifted it off the floor and found a small hidden safe under it, Kim replied. I broke open the lock and found five camera tapes in them. They all had notes onto them, keep away from the public, and it was signed Gerald Farkas at the bottom. Ron's eyes widened upon hearing the name of Ridley's father being mentioned. Okay, I'll be there in a minute, Ron replied. Then he shut the communicator off. Ron then took the newspaper with him and headed back down the hallway towards the lobby, where he went through the right door, leading down the dimly lit hall. The hall was a T-shaped unlike the other one, and Ron had spotted Kim at the end of the left side of the hallway, standing with an open door. Kim had four video camera tapes in her left hand, while she held the communicator in her right hand. Hey Kim, I'm here, Ron announced, running up to Kim. Oh, there you are, Kim replied, holding up the cassette tapes. I've got the tapes. Um, how are we going to play them? The video camera players down here are pretty hard to find those days since they're so outdated, Ron wondered. Our communicators have been modified for a video player add-on, so we can play them on those, Kim replied. Ron then took a look at the camera tapes and then noticed that their labels were in permanent marker, -ker, although slightly faded due to them being away for so long. The last one was the label, my new toy, second one, Fun time with my new toy, third one, party time, and the last one, the bitch who dared to defy me. Ron felt very unsettled by these tapes, but then began to worry of what he had seen on them. The last one worries me, KP, Ron said, holding up the fourth tape. These feel like snuff tile films to me. Maybe that's not what they are, but it seems like it. Whatever they are, we need to see what is possibly in those Kim replied, 
Ridley's father obviously hid these for a reason, and it can't be good. These tapes do contain clues as to why Dark Wood would end up abandoned, or possibly even clues to Ridley's past. Well, good point there, Ron agreed. And maybe they might even lead us to something that will help us find Ridley and his organization. Let's have a look at them. I'd feel a little more comfortable checking them back out in the coop, Ron suggested. Being nearly empty in this place gives me the creeps. Same here, Ron said. Most of this whole building has been stripped clean. The only thing I found used was the old newspaper, but everything else was just useless junk. Everything of value is probably taken or removed when this town was abandoned, so I don't think we'll find anything else, Kim replied, looking at the empty rooms. I don't think so, Kim said. Let's just get out of here. Agreed, Ron said. Then the two of them head back to the, out of the station. Once they made it out into Kim's coop, Kim opened the side of her communicator, slid in the first tape, my new toy. Into it, plugged the USB cord from the device to a computer console built into the dashboard. A small built-in tablet screen slowly flipped up to the middle of the dashboard, and the videotape was playing. Kim and Ron were quickly greeted with an unsettling sight. The video's quality hadn't been very good, since that was clearly shot from an old, outdated camera. But it was more than clear enough to see what was going on. The video opened up showing what appeared to be a teenage girl, no older than 15 or 16 years old, had completely stripped off of her clothing, and she was chained to a cement wall with her wrists and ankles. The room was appeared to what looked like a basement or a storm cellar. It was dimly lit by a hanging light out of range of the camera. Gruff man's voice then quick coldly ordered her to stop struggling if she vowed for her life and her family's life. And that's when Kim and Ron immediately heard some something that confirmed their suspicions. You better start showing me respect. Decked me and my boys some damn good respect. You fucking hear me? I'm the frickin' mayor, and I won't tolerate disrespect! The man yelled in an angry tone. It's Gerald, Ridley's father, Ron said with wide eyes. That means the girl must be Ridley's mother, Kim realized in horror. I want out of here. Let me go. My parents will look for me, the teenager girl screeched, struggling in the chains. A whip then struck her that made her yell in pain. Then Gerald removed in the view of the camera, giving Kim and Ron a good look at him for the first time. He bore a close resemblance to Ridley, but only without the facial scars with the, and the ratty hair. Gerald basically looked older, more imitating version of Ridley, and a bit overweight. Gerald was now aiming the gun at Sarah as he fired a shot between her legs on, into the floor. Your parents aren't going to find you ever, and you better listen very well, because I'm not going to say this again, Gerald snarled. Whatever life you lived and whatever plans you had for your future... It no longer matters, and it never will. This is your life now, and it's going to be your life until you're dead. So you better just know, my brother is the chief of the police here, and he works for me. You try escaping, or you disobey an order from even once, I promise you right now that your family members and relatives will die a very slow and painful, agonizing death. I'm also bringing you severed heads of here down here for you to gaze upon every day, to be reminded of those who show me every day and my boys respect and loyalty. So you better do as I say now, as you vow for their lives. Kim and Ron immediately heard Gerald mention a house address that made Sarah go pale, and they realized that it must have been her home address. Me and my boys are, are your family now, so you better just forget about your parents and siblings, or you'll find their severed heads in there and in the basement the next day. I give you an order, and you'll obey without a question. Defy me or my men, even once, and your family is dead, Gerald warned coldly. The rest of the video consists of Sarah being violated at gunpoint by Gerald and even forced to do horrible things that no one ever would have to go through. It was also disturbing for Kim and Ron to handle. Kim also shut it off and pulled the tape out of the communicator. Ron then grabbed the second video labeled Fun With My Toy and slid into the communicator slot. Kim and Ron then noticed that Sarah looked visibly worse than before, even though the video's quality wasn't really that good. She was now dressed in some old night sleeveless night dress and was tattered and torn with in pieces. And she had bruises and cuts on her body and a swollen left eye. And it was clear that Sarah had been physically abused by Gerald for even resisting whatever abuse inflicted on her. The video had started with Sarah 
lying near the wall of the basement, trembling and whimpering. There were bloodstains on the floor, and Sarah's nose was bleeding, which explained the security where the blood came from. What the hell I just tell you about covering the security camera in here? You defiant frickin' bitch! Gerald thundered in the background. I had to use the bathroom. Sarah whimpered, weakly pointing at something off screen. Gerald then struck her with a whip and yelled, I don't care if using the frickin' toilet. Let you keep that camera uncovered, and next time you pull another stunt like that, I'll take my power saw to your fingers, and that's, isn't that frickin' clear? Yes, master, Sarah whimpered. Gerald then whipped at her several more times and then said, No, I don't think it's clear to you, so we're gonna have some fun together. So you better not fight me or you'll vow for your parents' lives. All you gotta do is give me an order, and I promise that your family will be dead before nightfall. The rest of the tape mostly consists of Gerald forcing Sarah to do more horrible and disgusting things for over 20 minutes, and while all have a gun trained on her. At one point, he had grabbed a nail gun and shot a nail into Sarah's right knee, making her scream in agony until Gerald yelled at her to shut her mouth, then smacked over at the head with the club and as they're knocked out. It ended after that. Kim pulled the tape out, feeling sickened by what Ron, she and Ron had seen, and she was very worried about what was on the last tape. As Ron was about to place it in the communicator, der, Ron, Kim stopped him. No, I don't want to see that one, this one. Not yet, she replied, already shocked and horrified by what she and Ron had seen. At least we know what happened to Ridley's mother, Ron said grimly. The report Ridley gave the hospital doctors mentioned a lot about it, but I never thought his father would actually film that he would do to the poor girl. I guess that's why Gerald wanted them away from the public, Kim speculated. I never would have guessed it. He was the freaking mayor of this town, Ron exclaimed. I already knew that Ridley's father was a crime boss, but the mayor of this town? I didn't even see that one coming until I found this old newspaper. For in the other room. Room. Now that you mention it, Kim glanced at the newspaper at the back of the seat. Did you read the whole thing? No, but I did read in the back of the police station to know that, that the police chief and every single officer in town were members of Gerald Farkas's criminal underworld empire, and they abused their power in ways that I would never have seen since the, since the region of World War II in Germany. Ron replied darkly. Let me have a look at it. Kim replied, then took the paper off from the back seat and began reading through it. Kim's expression changed between shock, anger, and disgust upon reading the articles through the old newspaper. After about three minutes of reading through the paper, Kim threw it into the back seat and started the car. Ah, uh, Kim, where are we headed? The Darkwood Courthouse, Kim replied. The paper said that Todd Farkas was sentenced to death for his crimes back in 1999, but it didn't provide enough evidence as to all these crimes were but I'm hoping we'll find more clues there if the place has already been gutted by the police station. If it hasn't been gutted, we may find more than just clues, Ron implied. We may actually find all the evidence to all the crimes Gerald had committed in this town and possibly even the answer as to why Dark Wood ended up being abandoned. I hope so, Kim replied as he, the two started driving down the empty road. I want to find out and get out of this place as soon as we can. It's so creepy with us being the only ones here in this massive empty town. Same here, Ron replied, gazing at the abandoned buildings, stores, houses, and gas stations. Whatever happened made everyone straight up abandon the town must have been horrible, and I have a feeling that we're going to find out what caused it. The two of them not in agreement as they continued down the road, wondering what the unknown secrets awaited for them at the bottom of the courthouse. What Kim and Ron fully found out to be provided disturbing and terrifying, but they had no idea how horrifying the truth could be, and they knew they'd probably find it very soon.